These are the light switches I will be using. They look like this. Basically, they're just on-off switches, so you could buy another kind if you want, but these fit perfectly. This is um, what it says on the packaging. It says rated at 3A, 125 VAC. I'm not sure what any of this means. Um, it's just a slide switch on-off. Um, I got it at Radio Shack. Um, and it's the only thing I get at Radio Shack, other than the wiring. But, uh, if you can read that, that's basically the info on the light switches. The, the wiring we'll be using is uh, double, uh, it's actually speaker wire. Um, it's just, I guess the wiring doesn't matter, but it's just a two-sided wire. You're going to need two, well, you don't need a double-sided wire, but it really will help with what we're doing. So, if you can get that, then definitely do it. Solder doesn't matter just any kind of solder um, that's the kind I got you're gonna need soldering iron obviously um, I don't know how expensive they are we just had one and then I'll show you all this other stuff once we get to it okay first thing we need to do is um, we're gonna get the switches ready for soldering and there are three contacts on the switches we only need two so we want to make sure using our own meter that we have the switches in the right direction so all I'm doing is... So it's not upside down. So correct. it's on when the switch on is up. On when it's up, off when it's down. Yep. So if you look at the ohm meter, when I touch this, there's nothing going on. Okay. What when do you, I turn what are the you switch touching? on, the two of the contacts. And in these switches I Does use... Does it matter which two? No, in these two I use the outside, one of the outside ones and the inside one. And you can see now in the ohm meter that there's contact when I touch it. So that means it, there's power going through it when the switch is on. And then if I turn the switch off and touch the same two contacts, there's nothing. So you know the switch is off right now. So I know, yep, right now I know it's on in this position. And when I do the wires, I'm going to hook up to this one and this one. And then I'll put a mark on it on the on side so I know that side goes up. Yep, and I'm just laying them out in order here. We have eight switches that we're working with, and I want to make sure that they're all good. So I'm testing them. I'm leaving them in the on position. I'm putting them all in the same, you know, the same position on the counter, so that when we go to solder them, we can solder all eight of them, and then have to retest them again. The way the ohmmeter works is it sends out power through one of the metal prod things. We had the red and the black ones that were attached to it. It sends power out through one of them because it has a battery in it, and what it's trying to do, it's, it's trying to see if there's any power coming back to it. And so, if you were to take the two metal things and touch them to each other, then the power would be coming from the ohmmeter, going through there, and then going back into the ohmmeter. And so that would be a circuit, and it would read that it's getting power. And so the way we test the light switch is if we put one of the metal things on the light switch, and power's going into the light switch, and then we take the other metal one and we put it on another part of the light switch, we're trying to see if the power coming from the ohmmeter is going through the light switch and back to the ohmmeter. And if it is, that means the light switch is on and it's doing its job. And if no power is getting back into the ohmmeter, that means that the light switch is off and it's keeping the power from getting to where it needs to go. So that's how it would work with the light. If it was off, it would be keeping the power from getting to the actual light. Okay, so if you look down the counter there, I'm just, I'm just pre-wiring these. I have a couple of them set up. Um, I'm going to wire all eight of them and get the wires just in there and fold it over and ready for soldering. That way I can just solder in the two that, uh, in the two that we tested before. And they're all set up in the on position right now just so I know which which two of the three to use. Let's see, just, it's a very tiny Oh, Does it matter which wire goes into which one? No, it doesn't actually. Um, it matters which poles you put them on, but it doesn't matter which wire. So I just put two through, fold them back. You gotta keep make sure they're separated because if you don't keep them separated, so the, the metal part of the wires can't touch. Right, if they touch them, the light switch will always be on, whether or not the switch is on or not. 
I'll just be making contact. You gotta keep them separated. I know you're just singing that in your head. So pretty much what he just said is really important. Um, anywhere throughout this entire process, do not let wires touch each other unless you're intending for them to. If you want to hook two wires together to make the circuit, then great. But if you have two random wires, like the two we're working with here, they can't touch each other or else things are going to get messed up. And also, if, you're, if you couldn't see what um, poles we were putting the wires on, it's when you have the switch turned on, there should be three of those things on the back. There might be two on some of my switches, I'm not sure. Um, but if when the switch is on, you should be putting the wires on the two poles that are on the on side of the switch. Alright, so for this one here, it's very tiny, there's not a lot of room to work with, so I'm just making sure the wires aren't close together and making sure it's straight. You know what kind of wire is this? It's just double, mm -hmm. double wire. It's actually speaker wire. Speaker wire. But you have to make sure the solder you put on only touches the wire that you're soldering. And, if, and that it melts. If the piece of solder touches both of the wires, then they're joined together and the light's on. Yep. So to make sure it's completely separate, including the solder. One side, and the other side, and you can't hold it in one place too long because the some of the inner workings of the switch are plastic. And there's a lot of heat here, so if the solder solder iron stays on there too long, it could actually melt the body or the housing of the switch, and then the switch will be no good. So lots of things to watch out for. Now I have all of these. I double checked uh, to make sure that these are still working correctly by splitting the other end and then uh, stripping the wire and then I use the ohmmeter again and when your switch is turned on when you put one side of the ohmmeter on the one wire and the other side on the other wire it should uh, get power when it's turned on and the uh, two two things, there's two metal things that the wires are soldered to are the on end, so the switch is now on. And so the next step is to actually put it into the house, and it's a little bit hard to do this with one hand. What you're going to want to do is leave a gap in the siding uh, big enough for the switch. And the reason I get these switches is because they just fit perfectly. The wires also fit perfectly and uh, it just everything fits nicely so now I've got the wire up through there so I'm just gonna pull it up and that is the on side so I'm gonna make sure I turn it don't uh, twist it too much because you can break the solder and make sure the wire doesn't bend too much like that either you're gonna want to pull it up here if it's if you have a lot of slack and uh, just kind of slide it into place and then I will go ahead and glue it there and I'll also glue it from the back and then we have our wire pull it kind of tight I want to add a side note uh, that I, I noticed while I was editing this video if you when you glue it into place glue it from the front a little bit um, there should be little holes to put a screw through um, just put a little dot on like the top and maybe the bottom one and just kind of glue it lightly into place but when you glue the back of it glue only the sides of the light switch just put a little bit of glue on each side do not put it on the top because the top is open and if the glue um, touches the top of it too much it'll actually lock the uh, switch from going up and down and so you'll ruin it uh, so make sure it's only on the sides and of course it will vary depending on what kind of light switch you buy but um, with these ones, you just have to be careful where the glue is touching. Don't make don't make it so it's super bent right there, because then your solder will break. Um, just make it so that you can put siding on without 
the uh, the uh, wire bumping out. And then now we have our wire coming out, and after we do the ceiling, we can hook it up to the lights. So I'll go ahead and do this step. So now that we've got the light switches installed, the joists on, and the ceiling on underneath, we're ready for the actual lights. So first I'll show you the specific items that I buy, um, and then I'll show you how to use them. And right now, I'm looking for my power strip. I bought two for the last house, and I only used one. And so I have this one left over. So we'll start off with this. To power it, we're going to end up plugging this into the wall, and it's going to have an outlet attacher thing and everything. Um, so this is what takes the power from each circuit and puts it into the wall. Now we need to buy the actual wall plug separate. Um, so this is not that. This is just this is just like on your house. If you go into your basement or mechanical room and look where your electrical comes in from the street, um, it all kind of comes in through the wall. And then you have the big panel. Actually, it's in a lot of garages. So check in your garage too if you're interested. And it's just a panel with a bunch of um, you know, wires coming in and they just kind of plug into different spots and that's kind of what this is. Um, each room in the house will power, will have a light and a light switch and then the power from all of those rooms will go and hook up, in this case, in the attic and then from here it will go into the wall to be powered where in real life it would go from here into the street or in out into a uh, power line. Um, but anyway, so this is what I buy. I go to a place called Stevenson's Dollhouse. Um, Stevenson's Dollhouse is something like that. Um, I have the receipt if you want the name of it. I'm sure you're probably not going to travel to Pennsylvania just to go here. But um, Stevenson's Dollhouse is 49 Texaco Road, Mechanicsburg, PA, 17050. Uh, another side note, uh, I have been to this place quite a few times, and the lady that owns it knows me. And, um, she does sell most of this stuff here. Like, I get the light switches at Radio Shack, but pretty much all the electrical stuff she sells. And, um, it's really, everything there is just, like, perfect for what I need. And it is hard to find, I'm sure. If you guys are interested in buying this stuff, next time I'm in there, I'll ask her if I can maybe put a phone number or something. And if you guys would want, you might be able to order um, these supplies from there and maybe have it get shipped to you. Um, you might be able to buy it from the supplier, but I don't know. Um, and so it just says electric light on the front. I'm trying to give you the name, so if you want to buy the exact same things, you can Google these. It says miniature house, 12-volt uh, power connection. So that's, I guess, what you need to know. 12-volt power connector for miniature dollhouses lamps must be used with 12 volt transformer it was eleven dollars um, and does not look like there's anything on here any more information so that's that we'll use that later we don't need that just yet the lights that I buy are a certain voltage and they're actually the perfect size so I'll show you these um, I buy the warm white there's warm white and cool light the warm white is like reddish kind of like a normal light and uh, cool light is like a blue like an LED like a normal LED um, 7 through 19 volts uh, I'm trying to get like the name and yes it will pretty much last forever it's fifteen dollars for five of them so it's three dollars a light it does get expensive um, YouTube money pays for all of that for me it's by Evan Designs there's the address there's where you could order them I'm sure and like I said, I get the warm white. Um, so, that is uh, these lights. And so now to actually show how to hook them up. They come like this. There's five of them wrapped up. And so, well, the first thing you're going to need to do is drill holes. I don't know what size drill bit I have on there. Um, it's a pretty small one. I would think it's three-eighths. 3 8 bit, probably. Not sure. Uh, probably smaller than that. 
Anyway, you drill holes where you want the lights to be. So I want a light right there. The light, or the, um, where is it? The light switch that powers it is this one here on the left. Okay. So what the first thing you're going to do is put the lights and just, oh, crap. All right, I need to use the bigger drill, but then, but anyway, you would slip the light into the hole, and the first thing you're going to do is attach the light to the light switch. So that means one of these little wires coming from the light, one of them, it's hard to point the camera and do this, one of these little light, or one of these little wires, needs to go to one of the wires from the light. does not matter which, just one of them. And so, after I do that for the entire house, I'm going to come back to you. But when you put the lights in, where's the hole? When you put it in, uh, make sure you glue all around the top of the light, just to make sure the light's in place. And then again, make sure the wires go through the joists, so that you can put a floor on top of it. Okay, so that's that. Before you actually do this, make sure you watch this video and plan out where your lights and light switches are going to be and then also plan out where your joists are draw like where the wires are going to go um, over like where they're going to go through the joists and then before you actually put the joists on the house um, drill holes in them so that the wires can go through them uh, because you obviously don't want the wires going over them or under them because then you couldn't put a ceiling or a floor above so you want them to go through and you can always notch out the top, but that gets a little bit hard to do, so just plan it out ahead of time and drill the holes. Alright, so um, I decided, I said I would attach the light switch to the light first for all the circuits, but I changed my mind since I don't have the right drill bit on there, and I'll change that later. So what I'm actually doing now is I'm just fully wiring it, except just not putting the light in there yet. So I'll show you how I'm doing this. By the way, ignore these two wires. These are for the next room over here. Just ignore them. So we have the light switch. These, If you're wondering why there's two wires, I think I already showed you this. It's the double wire. Oh, yeah, I already did show you that. Um, it just pulls apart. So anyway, I just split it apart. They both come up. They go through the joists. And first, let me show you this. This is a, a normal circuit. Is a light and a power source and they're connected with two wires you can't I didn't even draw it <laughs> but whatever you get the point it's just a light and a power source like a battery well we're adding a light switch in there so the light a one wire from the light goes to the power source which is that strip we'll talk about later and then the other wire goes to the light switch and then to the power source so we don't have the light right now so what I'm doing is hooking up the power source or at least where it will be to the light switch so I'm actually soldering this to the light switch and then this wire is going to keep going and just going to end where the light is and this wire is going to end where the light is and so I went ahead and I did that for one circuit so we have two lights it doesn't matter which color goes where I'm just going to make the white uh, wire go to the light and the black wire go to the power source so the black one goes through I put a solder right here basically what you do to solder it is you have to strip the wires so you can cut them you cut them with this and then you strip them with this you put it in the smallest one you pull the plastic part off so you reveal the metal I then take the I then take the metal pieces and I or you know the metal parts of the wire and I wrap them around each other a few times and then you solder it and now what I also like to do is later on I'll glue this down and every few inches I'll glue down the wire so that if I'm picking the house up and I drop it or I'm moving it around the wires aren't moving within the walls or within the ceiling because if they move there's a chance the solder could break even though it's very rare I don't want it breaking in there also don't let other wires touch this if you have another solder right next to it and you decide to glue them both down with one thing of glue don't because if they touch each other they'll short out so anyway um, the only reason I have another solder here is because I only made this wire so long. Like, for example, um, this is the black wire I'm talking about. It's only so long until you need to keep going. So 
I just ran out of wire here, so I just attached another piece. It goes from here, and then it jumps over, and it goes into the attic. And at the end, I didn't split them yet, so it's still one wire. And so the white wire then comes... So basically what I have here is the switch is attached to the power source. Doesn't matter how it gets there, but it gets there. The white wire comes from the power source. It can take any route it wants, and it's going to attach to the light. I didn't put the light in yet, so I'm leaving this here. Okay? So this one wire, this one wire comes from the power source. One side of it goes to the switch, the other side goes to the light. My third wire is the white wire coming from the light switch. That one is going to go over and attach to the light. So now we have everything wired up except we have these two bare white wires here. And so what we're going to do, the thing that should connect them, is our light, which will go right here. One wire from the light will go and attach to one, one wire will attach to the other. And then guess what? you got a circuit, except for the power source. And we'll work on that later, because that's really confusing. Another note, a wire is a wire. It does not matter what color it is. That's just to help you, uh, the colors that are on there. Uh, there's a one really confusing circuit. Hope it's kind of really confusing because the switch is right next to the power source in the attic but the lights are really far away so I really had to wire it really weird um, and for one part I had to take the double wire rip it apart and only use one side of the wire just to extend one of the wires because if you think about it the wire going from the switch to the power source is really short but the wire going from the switch to the light is really long because that's farther away so I had to extend it, it does not matter, does not need to stay as a double wire, they just do that to help you. So if you need to extend a wire, does not matter what color, does not matter if it's connected, you know, it doesn't matter if it's still, you know, a double wire. A wire is a wire, so do what you need to do. So hopefully that should help you. But I like to keep this nice and organized. By the way, you can't have any more circuits than there are things on here. Um and I think there's twelve. So I have each one's going to be filled up. So here's one of them. And what I have organized this time, uh, which is way better than on the last house, is the wires all come in, and then I cut the joist a little bit so it goes through the joist. Now there's going to be no ceiling on top of this. This is all attic space, so it doesn't matter what it looks like. Um, that's why the power source is going to here. And so it goes through the joist, and then I put a piece on top, and I write the name of the room that it's powering. So it's the sunroom. And so we'll deal with this later. Um, I'm going to show you real quickly my uh, other house. How I... Okay, let's have it we not drop the soldering iron. Okay, um, I'll show you kind of what I did in here. It's, uh, it's all very similar. See how they all plug in? We have to make those plugs. We have to buy them and make them. And we also have to hook everything up. And then we need to hook up the wire that comes out of the power source we need to hook it up to a new wire which attaches to the plug which is inside I just have it laying over there but anyway so you can see these are the same lights I used I have the light in place there and all the crazy wires going everywhere this house I didn't really make it that organized um, so I don't know what's what but uh there's a plug missing there I'm not sure why because it fell out but um that's what the plugs are going to look like when we do them. So, that's that. And also, something I never said before, I don't think, if you have one one uh, light on a switch, it's going to be nice and bright. If you have two lights on a switch, it'll still be pretty bright. If you have three lights on a switch, it's going to start getting dim, and you don't want that. Um, because the way we're wiring them, um, the more lights you have on each circuit, the more dim it's going to be. So I would not exceed three I tried to make it two or less on each circuit. Um, so this room only has one. Now the only difference is if you have two lights or more than two lights on a circuit, how you do this, um, you would add your second light just right here on this wire. And uh, so you would end up connecting the lights to each other, then to the power switch, then to the power them back to the first light. Basically what the light switch does, the power is going in a circle, it's coming from here, boom, lighten that up. Um, 
with the light switch that'll stop the current so it can't flow through. And now we're on the last step, and it's not exactly the easiest thing in the world. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to get uh, these wires that we have ending here to go to the power. We need to have them plug in to the actual power um, strips, just like this. We have those plugs there. And the plugs you need to buy are by the same people who make the power strips. Again, it just says miniature house, electric light, um, and it, they just look like this, and it's very cheap as you can see, it's only $3.45. Um, I'm trying to find the name, please visit our website at handlyhouse.com, so if you want to buy these, they may be there. So, uh, that's that. Basically what we're doing, now these we have to do it a little bit more complicated with our, with our wires. I know this camera is bad at focusing, but there's not much to see here. Right there, there's a hole in the back, and there's three holes in the front. Two of them have metal prods coming through. Okay, so that hole just goes all the way through. Um, that middle hole we will not be using at all, not for one thing. So the first thing you're going to want to do is take those metal things out and you can use pliers to do that so I'm going to go ahead and do that so basically all I'm going to do is just grab it it's kind of hard to do and then I'm going to put my fingernail on the white thing and just pull and I just pulled it out you're going to set these down in a place where you're not going to lose them because we need them so just pull the other one out. Alright, take 5,000. Uh, basically what we have here is the thing with metal things taken out of it. It's got three holes there. What's supposed to be happening, and this is not what we're doing, but what's supposed to happen is each wire is supposed to go through the hole in the back. It's going to come out on the front and then bend over, like, you know, twist around and go through the hole on the right. Then the white wire is going to go through the same hole in the back, twist around and go through the left hole. And then the metal things would go back in. However, this wire is way too thick to do that. You couldn't get both wires through that hole. Um, this is talking about like real small wires. So we need to make a modification to this thing. Um, basically, what we need to do is take a drill very small drill bit. I don't even know what size that is. I'll, if I if I can figure it out, I'll overlay it in the video. I'm sure you can see it right now. Maybe not. It's just a small drill bit. Now I do explain this in the video, but the camera sucks at focusing, and it's also kind of confusing. So I'm just gonna explain it again here. Basically, this is how the plug is supposed to work, and this is how it comes. It's uh, just a switch. The red lines mark the tunnels on the inside of it. So what's supposed to be happening here is both of your wires come up through the middle and out. They come out right here. One wire will go like this and go down inside this hole. The other wire will come up and go down inside this hole. And they'll just kind of sit there. And then those little metal things will go back in the holes and it will hold the wire in place and then the power that's coming through the wire will be put into those metal things and then into the plug or into the power strip whatever but we couldn't fit the two wires up the middle it's just kinda hard to do and so this is an easier way to do it basically what we're doing is drilling holes right here and right here up into the side and so we're gonna completely forget that this middle hole is even here because we don't need it at all so I'm just gonna get rid of it just so you don't get confused uh, and then the wire one wire is gonna go up in this side and it's gonna come out like this and then the other wire is gonna come up here and come out like this and then you're gonna jam those metal things back in and uh, you could snip the wires off here and here but um, as long as this metal thing is touching the wire, it's good. So that's how we're going to be doing this. That's why we're drilling. 
you couldn't find the right size one. And oh, this camera sucks. Okay. We're going to start drilling on the bottom part with the one hole. And it's going to go in the side. And you're just going to drill straight in a little tiny bit. The only reason you do that is just to create a little bit of a hole there. And then you're going to angle the drill and very carefully drill upwards towards the top of it. And as soon as you feel the resistance coming off, you know you've drilled in, you've hit this right hole here. And now I'm going to take this right hole, I'm going to drill down into it. And, oops, I'm twisting up the wire there. And, it comes out the hole that I just drilled. So, as you can see, I basically made a new hole coming out the side of the thing. Okay. So now we have the three in the front, one in the side, and now I'm going to make one on the other side. Alright, so now I've drilled both of the holes. Now this is kind of the hard part. I guess you could say it's the hardest part. You're going to need to fish the wires. You're going to put the first wire in the side, that side hole we drilled, and it should come up on the right, not in the middle, but on the right, if you drilled it right. And then you're going to take it and bend it over like that. Just twist it over. Same thing with the other wire but through the other side obviously and I drilled them perfectly put it through twist it over and now we're gonna take the metal things and this is the hard part you gotta try to sometimes it's easy sometimes it's hard it depends on each one you gotta put them back in where they came from but this time there's that wire there that we just put there so pretty much you just get it started and then I mean there's no way you could put the thing in all the way just like this because that wires there and it makes it too difficult there's not enough room so you just get it started and now I'm gonna take the pliers here and just kinda squeeze it and it's going to sink down and you can see the flat part you can't really see it on camera but there's a flat thing in the middle of this rod and when that hits the white part it's in and I'm going to do that with the other one And sinks right in there. Now that's the hardest part. Once you've done that, you can trim off these little uh, extra pieces of wire coming off the side because you don't really need them. And then you should plug in, and the camera can't see it right now. It should plug in just like that. Maybe not. That should be pretty tight. So now it's plugged in there. And let's see, which one do we just do? That was the sunroom. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my light on. And that's the light for this room. So if I flip the switch, the light comes on. And it's also for the mud room. So now our lights are on. So we've got that working. I'm going to turn the circuit off because I'm not using it now. 
Now the only other thing we need to do is actually plug this house into the wall so we can get the power. Obviously I already did that because I turned the lights on. Um, but I'll show you how. I bought a transformer. Here's the packaging. There's no paper in there or anything to say any. Just kidding. I actually just found the packaging for the transformer. Um, and it has a website on there so I'll go ahead and put the website up. Um, but basically, yeah, it's just a 12 volt transformer. It has to be. That's what it says on the packaging for the power strip. And um, yeah, so it's a uh, 12 volt. Powers up to 32 lights. And it's a 20 watt plug in transformer. So, yep. Thing about it. So, if you want to find one, basically, it's just called a transformer, just this black thing. And. Of course, my camera can't focus. It says class 2 plug in transformer input, but you need to make sure it's the right size. Now, this one, I think you saw the package, it was like $27. Um, they do sell different different uh, transformers, like with different power. The one I used on that house was a little bit cheaper. It looks the same, but it can't handle as many lights. I think this can handle up to 32 lights, which is more than enough. That one on that house can only hold up to like 16, and I'm probably going to go over 16 with this one. Um, so the lady at the dollhouse place explained this to me. She said that this one would be fine. So, like I said on the back, 12 volt output, 120 VAC input, uh, 23 watt input, 20 watt output. So I don't know if that really means anything, um, but basically this is powerful enough for that. You, if you go to a place that sells these, I'm sure they could tell you about it. So, and now this white wire you see is the wire that's already attached to this. So it's just going to end here, and then one of them just needs to go on the positive, and one needs to go on the negative. And you just do that by unscrewing the screws, putting the plug there, and screwing them back down. And that's as simple as it is. And this house will plug right into the wall, and that's where you get your power from and the wire is nice and long from this thing. Now the wire needs to actually come out of the house. So what I like to do is before we're done I'll unhook that. Drill a hole. It'll come down inside the wall and then stick out of the siding. And then the house will just have a wire coming out of the side of it. And then I'll put an access panel right big right here in the roof. Take it off and you can get to all the electric. So that's pretty much it. That's how you do electric in a house. Uh, probably very confusing to follow. You have to buy a lot of specific things, pretty much the exact things I used, um, unless you are smart with electronics, unlike me, and you know how to, uh, and you know how these things work. But um, pretty much that's it. Um, that's all you have to do. I'm gonna put the floor over this now. All the wires will be hidden, and I'll do it again upstairs. So that's pretty much it. Now the only other thing is. If I have two of these, how can I make them plug into one of those? I have no idea. <laughs> uh, my dad's going to do that. I just talked to him. He said he knows how to do it. Um, but honestly, I couldn't tell you right now. So if you want to know, um, when I figure it out, maybe I can, you know, just leave a comment if, you're, if you actually need to know how to do that. If you're just curious, then don't. But if you seriously need to know how to hook those together into one um, I'd be more than happy to help you but um, only ask me if you really need help because I'm gonna have to do a lot of explaining probably and I'll have to figure it out so that's the full electric tutorial and uh, thanks for watching last thing I want to say is when you turn on one of these lights the light shines from all directions from the light like it goes it doesn't just go straight down out the end of the light like the top of the light is lit up too and so if you were to go ahead and put the the second story floor just directly over top of all your wires and your lights if it was dark and you turn the lights on in the house the light would actually shine up through the floor um, well depending on what kind of floor you have my floor is popsicle sticks so there's a lot of cracks in it a lot of voids and so light will come up through there even if it doesn't seem like there's a lot of room for it you will be able to see um, the light in between the sticks. So to fix this, what you're going to want to do is get some thick paper, maybe 
construction paper or like a brown bag um, or sandpaper works too and cut a little strip of it or maybe two of them and put them over top of the light and just tape them down and then when you put the floor over it'll block the light from shining up through the floor and just do that anywhere where you think there's going to be a problem and uh, it really does work so you, the, your your house could be pitch black and you turn the lights on only on the first story and if you look in the second story you can't even tell so it's it really works